Hello, everyone. Everyone that's new coming on today from all around the world. It's me, Sarah, and the Invisibles today in the Gold Room. And this is going to be a journey into asking questions, asking questions for yourself, for the planet, for humanity, and just allowing the answers to come through me through a group of spirit guides that I channel and work with since I was a young girl. I call the Invisibles. So knowing that this is also kind of a world, world state. Some of these questions, even though they're not coming, right, the answers might speak because a lot of what goes on in the internal world can be rippled effect into each other's lives as well. So I hope you enjoy this transmission and I'm going to share it one other place while I'm at it. And, you know, in this really a great opportunity for you to to ask a self, yourself a question that is maybe an answer, how do I say this? Ask a question, the answer that you may not have been open to hearing, you know, questions that you feel like you, you got it, you, how do I, let me just finish this. I want to share this for a second. All right. So while I'm just sharing this, feel free to put a question on the thread, especially using what we found out last time. You put it through, which is actually, then I can see what your questions are. Because <laughs> last time we had difficulties. So awesome. Oh, oh sound. You cannot hear sound. Let's see. Um, does that work? Can you hear the sound now, my dear? So if anyone cannot hear the sound, please tell me because that's an issue. I can also take out this mic. How about now? Is that is that working? So we had Catherine Chapman says that she couldn't hear anything. So I'm going to just take off my mic. It might not be as clear, but can you hear me now? All right. Well, I'm hope I'm hoping you can hear me. You got you, you can hear me? It's working. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Moving on. So, I'm doing this now without my little audio recording. So right before actually dropping onto this call, I came across a woman named Sarah um, Sarah Reinlicker. I'm not quite sure about her last name. I just posted the little live that she just did in Sarah Burns and the Invisibles. And she was talking about the importance of finding those, those growing edges in us, those parts of, of life that are uncomfortable, those parts of life that we might not really want to, I can hear you, great. <laughs> My mic might be broken. Um, okay, okay. So she was getting into, you know, what are areas in our lives that might be those, those like, oh, I don't know, I can do everything, I'm gonna go forward in this, but this one area or this one thing that I really need to communicate with somebody or this, this one way of expressing myself, it's really uncomfortable and I'm just gonna avoid it and you know, just assume that maybe it's just not in alignment for me to go there or express myself and maybe there's some other calling and blah, 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 blah. And so she was speaking to you know, finding those, those edges in ourselves because a lot of the, the goodness and a lot of the juice is actually behind what that, what that, that block or what that boundary is protecting. So how can we go into our lives and find those places where, you know, it's really uncomfortable, but learning how to push through and persevere through that discomfort is actually what brings us to this whole new layer of expansion that we couldn't even see possible when we were living behind the, the boundaries of our discomfort. So <laughs> with that excitement, because there's a definitely a few things that came up for me when I was hearing that. I was like, ooh, I have a few of those in my life that I'm, you know, just like, well, maybe if maybe if a year goes by, I won't feel this way. I'm like, oh, I still feel that way. Oh, how about two years? No, I still feel that way. So it's it's a challenge for me to look into that and maybe 
take some action myself. So moving on. So as she brought that up, it was a question that I wanted to get more into with the invisibles regarding regarding those edge points and how we can let me word this correctly. Kind of some guidance for anyone that is feeling that there is this edge point that needs to be broached, but whatever courage or strength that's needed to make it over that hump, like how do, what do we speak to that moment? You know, those, that part of ourselves. And so asking the invisibles what their perspectives on, are on when people do need to, to broach and, and to approach these aspects and these uncomfortable edge points in ourselves and what's something that would help us move through them or encouragement. So, because I would like to have some myself, because I know that those edge points eventually start feeling like big stagnation points for me. <laughs> All right, and before going, I just am going to be setting the intention. And where's my key? It's my new ding ding. ding. <laughs> mm. So just allowing allowing this, this beautiful space, this sanctuary of the gold room and the temple that is holding all this wisdom together, this, this mycelial fiber that's connecting me and the invisibles and all your guides and all those that are going to be seeing this transmission in the future or currently, just allowing this, this energetic veil of protection and sweetness and gentleness and and luminosity to to bridge us in this way so that as we're doing this work as we're having these transmissions come through as you're receiving knowing that it's really my, my encouragement is that you can either you can believe it receive it leave it or lend it which i love saying and so it's really up to you to feel into what what you want to do with the transmission that comes through and if it's too much for you to chew on or it doesn't resonate with you, you can leave it. If it's something that you feel there's a gem in there for you, but you're not quite ready to unwrap it, then, <laughs> then you're you're welcome to just lend it. And when I say lend it, I specifically am thinking, I call it lend it to the earth. So taking whatever that vibration is, whatever that little tidbit that you're, you're not quite ready to chew on, but you know it's important for you and just offering it to Mama Gaia, offering it to the earth and knowing that you can return to it when you're ready. And so that is the requirements of you. <laughs> Tamara liked the, she liked the question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to close this here and start the journey. So before going, offering a little cleansing sound into the space, lightning wherever you are. Your kittens playing in the background. <clears throat> there we go. If you took away what was rigid to you, would you have no walls? Would you have no structure to support what that rigidity was holding? Or is that rigidity the boundary line from your success? Is that rigidity the 
encompassing factor in your life that is containing what's possible for you, like a vessel. Perhaps that rigidity was put there for a reason in your growing process so you could feel held, so you could understand where the lines between what was possible and what was acceptable were. Because sometimes that rigidity is that very thin membrane that's holding what's possible back and what's acceptable or what's manageable in and close to you. So if in your life you're coming to a point in your experience where there is an expression, when there is an interaction, when there is a development that's beckoning you to leave behind the part of you that wants things gentle and soft and sweet. The part of you that wants everything to feel easeful because sometimes the greatest ease comes after the most resistance. Sometimes the greatest comfort comes after the most discomfort. We're not saying to dive towards aspects of your life that are protecting you for good reason, whether it's beliefs or systems. But what we are saying is how can you turn around the clock that told you that when this, when this hand reaches this point, it's bedtime, it's done. It's time to stop or turn around. Because what happens if you allowed yourself to stay while that clock, while that hand met past the witching hour, so to speak? So in order for you to feel safe with what feels unsafe because it is poking and prodding at your ego's protective systems, then you need to look into why are you prioritizing the ego's protection when the ego's protection is requiring and desiring you to prove it wrong, to encourage yourself to find where there's misqualifications of desire, where what you are developing within you is also limited. Because if you cannot breach those parts of you that are uncomfortable, then you are actually living a limited experience. And if you are living a limited experience, then you are distancing yourself from who you truly are because you are not limited. Thank you. Yay. Woo! <laughs> All right. Wonderful. So that was them talking about those edge points, those growing edges that can be really uncomfortable. And that was inspired by a talk that I posted on Sarah Burns and the Invisibles, the Facebook group. So if you want to see the woman that inspired that question, please do, because she rocked my world. So moving on. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Seems like Catherine's question has been answered. <laughs> this is the magic of the living stage. So going to Tamara. All right. So can the invisibles provide some guidance on moving through stressful situations? How to recognize the feeling of becoming, of becoming overwhelmed and how to release the energy and move on with the day? All right. 
It's a good question. Hmm, so I'm going to read it one more time. Can the invisibles provide guidance on moving through stressful situations, how to recognize the feeling of becoming overwhelmed, and how to release the energy and move on with the day? So moving through, so yeah, releasing this energy that can actually prevent us from being present with the rest of the day. This energy that can just carry with us like a big weight. <laughs> so let's see what they have to say about that. Well, if you're not giving the space for your discomforts to find their place, to reach a sense of surrender again to existence, then in some ways, you're not giving space to allow yourself to honor the space that's needed to disentangle these energies that feel heavy or burdensome because the situations that cause them you see the situations themselves are not the culprit though they are what can inspire the reaction but it's how you react on an energetic level how your mind how your body how your systems of dealing with dynamics that's what creates the problem, okay? Even though, of course, these situations may be general culprits for um, discomfort for many beings, it is how you relate to responding internally with what's presenting to you. Now, that is something that you can work with. Situations in life, you can work with addressing why they were created or why they're there for you to distangle reactions to them. But they themselves are somewhat manifestations or reflections of the great play of your life seeking to be resolved or harmonized with or discredited in the point that you stop believing that it's important to have these reoccurring systems of stress in these ways. Not to say that you will not get more challenges to grow from, because that is a commitment to being human, as we know, as you may know. But for anyone that's experiencing the drama, the internal agony or disenchantment that can come with stressful situations. We asked you to think about a system that would help you as a child. What's something that your mother or maybe teachers or an environment that would generally just calm your nervous system? How would you treat a child who was expressing or outraged at something that was going on, okay? Because it's in some way that child part of us that can go more in overwhelm, okay? And so in order to assist them in this learning curve, we need to reach that part of ourselves. Sometimes, you know, finding, finding comforts, not indulging to the point of you know, turning that comfort, if you say it's a food or an activity or something that 
has your zone. But we are saying that sometimes you need to remind that inner child that it's okay to have these feelings, to have these responses. Because if you keep going to that part of yourself and being, grow up already, move past this already, then in some ways, it's turning into a scolding of your emotional response. And the child or the part of you that has the excitement level and the inspire, inspired desire to move through and grow and be enthusiastic about what's next, will they, if they feel shamed for the reaction of overwhelm, if they feel that that overwhelm and their, their now put on them, there's no appreciation for their response, then they might reel back. Then that part of you that has the stamina to move through these challenging experiences and to have the motivation and the maturity, well, that comes with the child feeling safe and appreciated for the reactions. Then you can tell the child to have a time out, think about it, and move on. But that's that's a general antidote we have as a first a first diagnosis response. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that beautiful inner child that we have with us, and I don't know if that was helpful for you, but I've I know that I've definitely got that message before where. Oh, you're welcome, Catherine. All right. So moving on. So, Catherine, I'm glad that you have something else that will work for you. Another question. So, Catherine says... In many ways, okay, she's saying that, I'm just going to show this. So she says, I totally resonate with what you're saying with the first transmissions. In many ways, the messages pertain to my original question, but I suppose I wanted to ask for some more personal guidance. All right. This is for you, Miss Catherine. And before I get into that, I just want to make sure that more thing that came up the last time. All right. I think we're good. All right, so I think people are able to see this. So if anyone has been putting any questions through and they're not getting to me, it's because you haven't put it through the Be Live. If you're not watching it through Be Live, you might be putting on a Facebook thread that's not connected, as if I shared it somewhere. So that's our over here. All right, so. Catherine, my dear. I've been struggling, late, uh, struggling lately. It seems my world is unraveling and I'm unsure if I'm to leave my home. I'm asking for more advice on how to understand more. I'm asking for more advice on how to understand, learn from, and how to best respond to the, this potential change lesson with my life or with my home. All right. Let us see what the invisible have to say about that. <coughs> Before I do that, I'm just going to put this on so that there will be a question. So if anyone's popping on too, feel free to. There we go. <coughs> I 
The home is not what keeps you safe. Do you know that? Do you know that it is not what you've created that has brought you joy? Do you know that? Do you know that it's not how you've developed your offerings which have brought you sustenance? It is the decision to allow yourself to live in the direction of your soul's general or natural course. The flow that is moving from behind you, from all around you, that is engulfing you in its beautiful magnetism and guiding you. That sustaining experience is coming from. That is where the understanding of your growth is coming from. And your home and your offerings and how you show up in the world are part of you riding that current. So when you're approaching this topic to change homes, to uproot the civilized expression of yourself in some ways, to find the next most aligned manifestation, we want you to realize that it's already happening, okay? So on a layer and on a level, that you're feeling now. This, if you're getting these feelings, which you have, and maybe you have for some time, but it's because there is pressure coming from all around you. It's design encouraging you to the point now of a slight discomfort possibly, because enough is enough. Whatever you're restricting yourself with to feel contained, that you have security and foundation. We want you to know that that is exactly what is preventing you from having true, authentic security and foundation. Does that make sense? So sometimes in life, the symbolism that represents certain things to us, the archetypes, the dynamics that, that show us that we're grounded and secure can be used against us in the way of preventing us from actually taking the steps to true foundation, to true rooted, sustaining experiences and expressions. So when you're looking into these questions, Catherine, we want you to examine who in your life is holding some threads of disapproval for what this reaction, what this reaction to your innate design of success. And maybe asking them if possible, or asking why you feel that they might be holding on to you not following this course not allowing yourself. Maybe there's no one, but we think there's someone or a few possibly that will be affected in some ways. But if that is the emotional connection that is almost, perhaps there's also a chord in there that you need to reevaluate between you and maybe a loved one, between you and any beings that might be not so enthusiastic and to know that it is not because there isn't a love and respect for you, but that there is a desire to keep you safe with them, for you to be part of their feeling of foundation and structure. Maybe this doesn't resonate to you, but we feel that this might have been a pattern for you. So 
We were also hearing a date July or August 23rd, 2006. Possibly? No, that was another. No, that was, that was a date, yes. Anyways, moving on. So perhaps it's a cycle or a rhythm that is encouraging you to re-examine what wasn't taken heed of. So as we look into these areas of our lives, when we're being asked to take an action that is not in the natural rhythm of what we've been developing, this is a great time to pray or to seek counsel with your internal strength and knowing that asking to find beings in your life that are going to support who you are with who you are becoming. Okay. That are going to be able to witness love and desire for you to reach more of your potential. Even if it means losing you in their physical experience, even if it means losing your support in some ways, your own enthusiasm. Because when you have these reflections of people in your life that truly can hold you and support you during these great times of shift, because they believe in you and your potential, be close to them or ask for their support or speak with them. If there's somebody specifically that you're very uncomfortable, this would be in regards to what Sarah was bringing up, is that last question. Who are you the most uncomfortable to broach this with? Is there somebody, maybe a few people? Communicate with them. Maybe the keys to your understanding, if this is a good situation or desire or design, might be lying just beyond that. So we hope that's helpful. Thank you. Hmm. All right, so that was for Catherine. Beautiful. I hope that was helpful um, for you. And if there's any resonance, please share too. And if there's anything that didn't sit well, that's also helpful. They felt like they were tracking a whole bunch of areas in your life. Hmm, peach tea. Also, if people have just, oh, you're welcome, dear. If people have just popped on and you want to, you want to just say hi, maybe even say where you are on the planet. That would be really fun. Um, I'm going to be moving on. So for anyone that's just popped on, this is a great opportunity for yourself to ask a question for yourself, humanity, or the planet to the invisibles. And to know that these questions also and these answers can speak to you as well, as we've already had a few times, realizing that there is a universal stage, that if you are popping on, perhaps there is something that is here for you too. So moving on, let's see. It looks like we actually don't have a question queue. So if you've popped on, welcome and congratulations because you could probably be next. I probably have room for another maybe three questions before closing this. So please put your questions in the Be Live um, thread, which I think will be if you're watching it through maybe Sarah Burns and Invisibles. And I'm just going to double check that nobody's sent me any questions in other places. Also, if you want to share this, you can totally share it. If you think there's somebody that's on your thread that or in your group that might have a question for me. So moving on, if I don't get a question in the next moment, I'm just going to do my intermission song, which is a little thing I like to do. And so this is just the song to kind of just free flow the space and sing to you guys. Well, the question is coming through. If you are having trouble getting your, like if, just for everyone that knows, I cannot see any questions. So if you, for whatever reason, tried sending a question and it didn't come through, um, just go to make sure you're watching through Sarah Burns and Invisibles or you can send me a personal message. All right, so here's a little song. Before that, I thought it's supposed to be these little vibrational toning experiences. So if you allow the permission, if you give permission, you can send the sound to wherever you are, wherever you are on the planet, to your space, and just a little, a little sonic gift. And 
maybe your body, maybe some thoughts that are moving for you, maybe to hold the hand, maybe that one for you. There we go. All right, here's a little song for you while I'm waiting for a question. And if I don't get a question from any of you guys, then I'm just going to ask my own question. Because I like that too. Here we go. <coughs> <coughs> also, before I sing, um, another question that I found really people like, that if you don't know really what it is, you can just say, is there anything that the invisibles pick up for me? That's really simple. And they're pretty good like that. So here we go. Before you can unwind the spine that holds it all, you must remember all that decides itself through you is not made of you too. So disassociate with what cannot be born through you. If it holds a beacon to your heart, then let it shine through. Then let it shine too, then let it shine too, then let it shine too. So beauty comes to those who've spoken, melodies and all unbroken. The beauty of the ancient sea, and water comes on to you. So know your purpose, even if it is shaded. Even if it has masked itself, even if it is craving, and when the tides they unravel you too, let the wisdom within you shine through. Let the wisdom within you shine through. Let the path before you guide you. Okay. <laughs> Intermission song complete. All right. Looks like we have. All right. We've got two questions. All right. We're going to start with Donald. All right. So the question from Donald, do the invisibles have any guidance on how to deal with a visiting family member who rejects all forms of spiritual beliefs on a basis that if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Ooh, yeah, maybe you should show them this, this transmission. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a good one. I'm sure that they've got some ideas. I mean, they've had to work. I've had to work a lot with that just in my own narrative, with my own beliefs around how the world is not able to receive my, my form of, of spirituality. And so let's see what they have to say about that. Okay. You're not meeting who you are designed to explore the great expanse of the unseen. Right? It's not it's not who this is relative to, it's always relative, but who they are. It's possibly meeting. It's an opportunity for you to meet the edges of disbelief or resistance in the collective. Why there is resistance, why there is denial of that which cannot be measured, 
through the belief in the spirituality of science, then we want you to explore what is it that can be measured through your expression on this planet and how you have grown and changed. Serendipitous moments, synchronicities, the unraveling of the mystery, the magic, all of that cannot be measured necessarily, but it can be felt. So connecting in with how has that relative experienced synchronicity, experienced an enlightened moment? What brings them to that place? Perhaps finding that meeting point where their enthusiasm lays in their beliefs, in what actually lights them up and expands their world. That, in some way, is meeting that same point where your world becomes expanded. Because if it isn't going to be acknowledged or appreciated, perhaps just the excitement of the expansion of what's possible can be a meeting point. But we understand that there are challenging dynamics that block certain conversations from happening. And we understand how that can be very challenging and hard to feel that a part of you is not believed in. A part of the fabric of what makes you, you, what enlivens you, what creates more of you feeling more alive on this planet is not acknowledged as valid. And that is sadness. We feel that. We feel how that affects your body. We feel how that speaks to a rhythm in you, a pulse in you that gets slowed down. We almost have this image. Oh, they want me to speak to this at least. So they're seeing this image of like this little puppy and and has like, it's experiencing all this newness and this brightness and, and then gets scolded or gets, um, you know, starting to get trained, you know? And we're wondering like what we're like, both me and the invisibles together, we're trying to word this for you, um, is, you know, maybe is this puppy possibly, at first, you know, I thought maybe, oh, okay, there, come back. <clears throat> the puppy is an aspect of your relative that has been scolded for their wonder, for their excitement and willingness to explore the profound in the simple. Maybe when they were a child, maybe that when they were young, they too had experiences of passion and excitement, of connection with this unseen energies. Maybe it was even something as like a Santa Claus or um, things like that, that were trampled, that were trained out of them. So when we meet these relatives, when we meet these beings, Maybe find what part of you that can relate to having that trained out of you. For having even a desire to ask these questions or manifest or call in 
reflections to teach you about the unseen, about the mystery, about the expansion that cannot fully be measured yet. In some ways it is. Sarah's reminding us to tell you about um, Bruce Lipton. So within these, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna say this out loud. So um, Bruce Lipton, he does this amazing book and series. I don't know if you know about Bruce Lipton. I should write, I'm gonna write him here. Um, Bruce Lipton does this great book. Maybe you've heard of him, Donald. Biology of Belief. Put that there. Um, so Bruce Lipton does this great book, and he, he's I've, the only one I've read so far, but The Biology of Belief, and he is this biologist that goes into um, understanding how the body is actually directly affecting, affected by beliefs we have. And it goes through a whole series of working with stem cells. And the the work he does is profound and pretty groundbreaking on the science level because it shakes up a lot. Um, but that learning a bit about that, and he goes into the history of science and and all those points in science where you know, the, the science world had it. They totally understood like, this is this is how the world works in all of its intricate natures. And then that was, then this one system starts popping up or a one theory. And that theory, you know, can turn into wars. That theory can turn into a lot of pain and discomfort, you know, because it is also breaching that wall or that part of the religion that feels like it's, it's held in this belief and that, in some ways is a belief that comes in and says actually this really important quality is missing and if you don't put that in the equation then you're not aware of just how much more you don't know so perhaps speaking to them and getting to that point if you if you even can if you know Bruce Lipton or if you want to do some of your own research it's a great if there's an audiobook of it on on audible that's how i listen to it if you don't have time to to read or you can listen to it while you're doing work but he really gets into some really poignant points that can work with people that are coming from a scientific background that are wanting to expand, expand where their edges of resistance are to really how much experience and knowledge is, is awaiting them. So I feel, I feel pretty complete with that. I'm gonna just check. I hope that was helpful. Let's see, is there anything else? I guess they're also they're also just saying you know just trusting that everyone has their their own journey on this on this road and sometimes especially with family like what I'm hearing is like especially with familial relations we you know you've probably heard of like the black sheep well my husband likes to call it the rainbow sheep <laughs> and so realizing you know maybe you're the rainbow sheep of your family I'm just gonna write that because it's so fun rainbow sheep. So to all you rainbow sheep, realizing that maybe you actually play a very important role in your family's line, in these relatives, as somebody that has been placed by creator, has been placed to play the role of like offering or exploring or bringing these other insights that your family line might not have really felt safe to develop or to have. And, and so I know finding that point where you're not just meeting resistance all the time is important and that can come with language and can come with just exploring how how to broach different subjects but but you mean rainbow sheep we've got it we've got a mission on this planet too so it's all y'all rainbow sheep <laughs> all right so moving on I think I've got, oh, actually, I think I, I saw another message. Um, let's see. All right, let me just double check here. Looks like we're good. All right, so the next question we have is about the rain. So, dear friend, he's worried about the rain and from where they come and go, or should I? So. 
All right. So this is about the rain. This is a really, I'm going to write this here. Okay. So that's a really powerful question because I've been feeling that recently. And I remember living in Hawaii during a time when there was this absolutely perfect example of harmony with nature. And it was a time when I was living in Hawaii where it would rain at night. So all your gardens, everything would be watered during the night when it was nice and cool. <clears throat> and then there might be a little sprinkle like as the sun's rising and then it would just stop and the day would be sunny and beautiful. And then the next day it would rain at night. And this happened for a good while. And I remember, I remember that as something really important to hold on to being like this feels like the balance of nature because the rains were also coming you know when it was best for the plants when they weren't going to get scorched in the sun from being wet and and then we got to have all this sun and all this beauty and we all got to dry out in the sun so i'm going to ask them too because the feeling i had and what in my experience too before getting into the invisibles is i do believe that we affect the weather that consciousness that humanity is affecting weather and not just with in the like the physical plane i think that the physical things things with global warming are real and are a manifestation of something deeper that hasn't been a deeper out of balance a deeper like that how do you just miss an unbalanced expression that's been happening on this planet and and what I found so far when we do my own inner work with that is for me the rains are also kind of this like feminine you know they're this this sweet nourishing cooling life-sustaining energy and I feel like when the rains taken away for too long it's like this this fire and I can take out the duality of feminine masculine for sure it's it's like just too much fire there's too much too much fire on the planet and like less less cooling and so what that looks like in us you know where in our own lives can we examine like maybe where there is too much fire in our own bodies in our own experiences and sometimes for me because for me elements and emotions are all connected so fire can be even just like sometimes being driven like just this go 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 is a very fiery action-based energy whereas you know, slow, receive, relax, like calm the nervous system. It's very watery, it's very, you know, receptive and feminine. So I've been finding like where in myself can I create more space for this receiving to be able to receive because rain is so much regard related. Oh good, you're welcome. Um <laughs> So, so rain is, is something that we receive, right? It's something that the only way to, to experience rain is in a point of reception, to, of receiving, because it's coming down, right? It's not something that we can, like, we can, but we can make happen in the same way. So that's my little squirb. Let's see what the invisibles have to say about the rain. The rain don't go nowhere, she come where she flows. The sun don't shine nowhere, she shine where it goes. 
Teach not to your children what the ancestors have held back. Teach not to your children what the ancestors have held back. There ain't not go where she flows, but the sun knows where to go. There ain't not go where she flows, but the sun knows where to go. Teach on to your children what the ancestors have held. Teach on to your children what the ancestors have held. Mm. So, in order to leave the flames of injustice on this planet, to find the quenching nature of the rain, to soothe the fiery counterparts of pain, right? Go into yourself where there are fiery actions rebelling within you and ask for the spirit of the rain to embody and soothe your own flame. Because the rain comes when the rain feels the need and the request. But what is preventing the rain from coming in the balance is there are counter beliefs <coughs> There are counter beliefs and there are counter prayers that are being shot up into the atmosphere. There are those that desire to feel discomfort, that want the planet to be inhospitable so that their beliefs of what's being needed of them to bring nourishment. What, what is needed that cannot come from nature to bring nourishment. This is a very disgusting aspect of humanity right now. This monopolization, this turning of, almost turn, creating a financial institute that feeds off of the lack of elemental support and connection. So if you have found yourself relying on a system that is out of alignment with the connection with the elements, then you'll find in some ways it might start leaking into how you connect with the elements. Maybe not you who wrote this question, but there are ways to call the rain into balance. And these have happened for a long, long time, okay? Finding a place on the earth that is also dry, and bringing your tears there. Or the tears of others is one of the greatest gifts you can offer at this time. If you are crying, offer some of those tears to the dry planet, to the thirsty earth, to the thirsty culture, to the culture that is not capable of quenching its thirst, of fear, of guilt, of resistance to the divine order of nature. Because even if you are in a place of dryness, if you are in a place somewhere in the world, is natural or the dryness, or that is the quality of existence there, to the point where plants grow in order to sustain themselves through the dryness, to create their own water systems, that's a little different. 
There are places on the planet that need to be like that for the balance. But if you are located in a place that used to be lush and now is seeking or experiencing drought and fires, that dryness is out of integrity or is a response to amass this connection with our responsibility, with your responsibility, with humanity's responsibility to pray and call upon the elements, to create space for the essence of the rain, to be appreciated, to be loved, to be revealed. Thank you. Mm. Hmm. All right. Well, that was the human deer. And for anyone that's been wondering, what do, what is about this this rain? And I I like that they got into, you know, offering some tears. You know, if you are if you are going through an emotional time, offer some of those tears. Offer some of your own body's rain to the earth to the quench. Maybe getting into groups of people and doing doing work for for the rain too. I've seen I've I've called upon the rain before, and I've also called upon like pockets to appear in the rain that have happened. Where you know I was living in a tent city, and like the whole rain, if the rain came, people didn't have tents at that point, and like everyone, all their belongings, everything was like soaked. And I could feel the rains coming with my friend Sebastian. And so what we did was we were like, we want the rain. The rain is good, but can we just have this this little area keep dry? And we kind of told the elements, we told the elements, you know, just just around us, like around this park where all these people are sleeping and we're all here, a lot of homeless folk. Can you please just not come right here? And we actually watched the wall of rain. And this is a true story. <laughs> we watched the wall of rain on the outside of the park come. And it was amazing. It was like 18 years old, and that was quite powerful for me. So, so that's knowing that we do, we can connect with the elements. And you know, sometimes even like when I've done rain prayers, even just like a little bit of rain comes down or like a mist, and and that's enough to just know that the elements are listening to us, that the elementals are listening to us, and. Yeah, may more beings be able to listen and work with them and see them as life force. So thank you for that powerful question. And unless there's another question that comes up from somebody that hasn't spoken yet, um, I'm going to close close this round. So yeah, I'm gonna give just a little moment if there's any any extra oh I should wait. If there's anything else that people want to share, you know, that's come up for you while you've been hearing this, um, feel free. And otherwise, I'm going to be signing off in a moment. So before signing off, and if there is somebody on that has something, a last question that you haven't been able to get across yet, this is your opportunity. I'm just going to show this. Okay. And for anyone popping on that doesn't know the work I do, here is my work. This book. <laughs> I'm just going to show that. It might be a huge thing, but okay, that's a little huge thing. <laughs> All right, so I'm not seeing anyone else popping on with the question. So just want to thank you all. Thank you all that have appeared. Thank you all that are listening to this. The minutes are going to be coming later when I get around to them. So you can go back to your question if you want. And I thank you for spending this time, whatever brief or long duration you've been here, and to know that we are every Wednesday. So you write that. So Wednesday at 2.30 PST is when we do our q a so if you have any friends that you think would be interested in this please share because it's a great opportunity to just drop in wherever you are and have a moment for yourself or humanity or whatever wishes to come through and 
I'm going to be actually teaching a class, if anyone's around, I'm teaching a class on Salt Spring Island in a couple weeks, possibly in Duncan, and then I'm going to be teaching a class, possibly a couple in Toronto at the end of August. So stay tuned. That will be, if you go to my website and you go to the subscribe, if you go into the transmissions page, which will have YouTube videos and different poetry that I've, I've done, You'll, a little subscription option will be there. And if you want to subscribe to my newsletter and find out, you know, when the next classes are, or if you just want to get little brief blurbs, that's always a welcome. So thank you so much, my viewers. And like I said, at the end and at the beginning, I'll put it here. There we go. Here we go. So remember, this is your opportunity to believe, receive, leave, or lend. So if anything came up during this time that doesn't quite sit right with you, know that it doesn't resonate, you know, it's not yours, you can release that. Um, if you want to believe it, if it's really important for you to like keep that belief or that excitement so that you can take action, then go for it. And if there's something that you really need to receive that came up through this time, know you can receive it, you can receive that wisdom to heart and allow that be a bomb for your soul and leave it. If there's, you know, if there's, or if there's anything that came up that you're like not quite able to digest fully, know that you can digest it later. You can send it like a morsel, a little seed package into Mama Earth and that'll be waiting for you and you can return to that when you're ready. So thanks again and I'm gonna close with this sound. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.